TC266 Variable Density Flexible Foam. Today we're going to explain the basic use of the TC266 Variable Density Foam. And uh, what this foam allows you to do is uh, adjust the ratio to adjust the softness or the density of the foam. Now since this is a fairly soft foam, we typically use it in conjunction with some kind of skin material. So for our demonstration here, we're going to be using some of our mask latex and pouring that into a hydrocal mold. And then we're going to let that dwell for about an hour and then pour that back out. And that gives us just a, a thin latex skin on the surface of our mold. And then we're going to backfill that with some of the TC266. And we're going to uh, mix that up to a about a five pound density. Now first, important to remember that anytime you see those little labels that say shake or stir before use, make sure you do that. With uh, the 266, the part B will need to be shaken and stirred before use and make sure you've got uh, good clean mixing sticks and uh, mixing cups ready to go. So here's how the variable density works. For a lower density three pound foam, you can mix the foam 100 parts B to 50 parts A. And that results in a pretty low density foam, but it's actually a fairly firm formula of foam when you mix it that way. For a softer, more pliable foam, but it's actually a little bit more dense, is the 5 pound density, which is 100 parts of B to 30 parts A. And that's the ratio we're going to do to backfill this prop face. So we're going to measure out 200 grams of part B and then mix in 60 grams of part A. So again, that ratio is basically 100 parts B to 30 grams A, and we're just doubling that ratio. Now, I always look, like to mix my foam all in one cup, and that makes the cleanup much easier later on. So here we're using a gram scale to measure out our base component, the B, and then the part A. And once I've got that measured out, I'm ready to mix that up. And we can also add pigments to this if we wanted to add a flesh tone or uh, any other color we wanted to add to that, we could put in at this point. Now with flexible foam, especially with the TC266, this is a very fast setting foam. So you wanna mix it up as soon as possible and get it ready to pour into your mold. Now here I've got my mold ready to go. And also remember that foam likes warm temperatures. So here we had the mold warmed up to about 85, 90 degrees. And that allows that foam to really get a good surface on it. And even though we don't need a, a good skin surface here, we want a really good bond to that uh, latex face. So I'm sloshing it around and then I can set that mold down and let the foam free rise. Now, as I mentioned before, the 266 is a pretty fast setting foam. So it'll free rise in about two to three minutes to its full expansion rate. And then after about 20 to 30 minutes, you'll be ready to demold. Now, remember that a part like this, if, uh, if you're casting a part like this in a much more complicated mold, it's a good idea to cap your mold to build back pressure to help force the foam into a complicated mold. Uh, for a simple face like this, it's okay to let it rise in an open mold like this, but uh, with back pressure, you get a much better quality part. Now here's our finished foam part, and you see our latex skin is well bonded to the foam and ready to trim that up and finish it with uh, flexible paint, either latex paint or some of our uh, stretch or flex paint. And there you have the basic use of the TC266 flexible foam. And of course, all of our flexible foam formulas and latex products are all available on our web store at brickintheyard.com.